This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday the 10th day of December in the year 2019. Here is what we're tracking tonight. Guyana has improved its overall ranking in the 2019 United Nations Development Program Human Development Index, which is a statistical measure of improvement or deterioration in human welfare. The country moved from 125 in 2018 to 123 in the 2019 report, which was released yesterday in Colombia. The report is titled Beyond Income, Beyond Averages, Beyond Today, Inequalities in Human Development in the 21st Century. Credited for this overall improvement were marked achievements in several socio-economic areas. Of particular importance was the area of socio-economic sustainability, which saw some big numbers. The report revealed that 96% of the country's 744,000 population is currently using improved drinking water sources, while 86% of the population is using improved sanitation facilities. The Guiana Water Incorporated, the country's national water regulatory agency, has intensified its efforts over the last few years to ensure all Guyanese have access to potable water. In education, the adult literacy rate is estimated to be 85.6%. Adults are considered those persons who are 15 years and older. And despite the consistent disruption in the electricity supply by the Ghana Power and Light Company, it was highlighted in the report that 88.8% of the country's rural population has access to electricity. Achieving a perfect score of 100% was the proportion of people older than a statutory pensionable age receiving an old age pension. In the area of poverty, it was revealed that only 3.4% of the country's population lives in multidimensional poverty while 6.3% of the country's working population has a purchasing power of 3.1 US dollars per day. For communications, the report disclosed that 37.3% of the country's population are internet users, while 83 of every 100 persons are mobile phone users for mobility. International inbound tourists were estimated to be 247,000. The area of employment revealed some worrying numbers. While overall unemployment remains a constant 12%, unemployment among youth aged 15 to 24 stands at 22.6%. Additionally, 56.8% of all employment were considered vulnerable employment, while 35.2% of youth between the ages of 15 and 24 are neither in school or employed. Further, in the gender analysis, it was discovered that Ghana's maternal mortality ratio, the number of deaths per 100,000 live births, is 229 per 100,000 persons, compared with a regional average of 74 and a global average of 211. The UN has set itself a target of reducing the global maternal mortality ratio to less than 70 per 100,000 live births by 2030. More news coming up in a moment. the most critical life-changing moments, the National Insurance Scheme is here to ensure that your needs are covered. Access reimbursement for medical expenses for various aspects of your medical care. We know that eye care is of utmost importance. Receive assistance with our spectacle care voucher. Visiting the dentist? Dental care is also covered under our sickness benefit services. Offset the funeral expenses of a loved one with costs covered by our funeral benefits. National Insurance Scheme. We're there every step of the way. Enter the GBTI Quick Cash Christmas promotion and make it a Christmas to remember. 
you get up to $500,000 easy for anything you want this Christmas. Plus, enter for a chance to win fabulous items for your home. One complete seven foot granite top base kitchen cabinet, one sectional suite, one five piece dinette set, and complimentary baskets of goodies. Apply at your nearest branch or online at www.gbtibank.com. GBTI, we see Christmas through your eyes. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. It's bigger, it's better, it's back. It's GTT's plus size Christmas promotion. Connect with your friends and loved ones with GTT services to benefit from our biggest ever Christmas bundle of specials and be one of our plus size winners. Visit our website or call 227-9444 for more information today. Big bundles for you. Big bundles for you. Top up a grand, we make a winner out of you. We got a game show for you. Game show for you. Welcome back. Let's tell you now that Ghana will serve as the chair of the group of 77 countries for 2020. The G77 is a United Nations-based bloc of developing countries that was formed back in 1964. A release from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs today said Ghana's election follows a decision by CARICOM earlier in 2019 to ensure that the regional candidate assumes the chairmanship in 2020 of the largest negotiating group of developing countries in the United Nations. The release added that during its chairmanship, which coincides with the UN's 75th anniversary and Ghana's 50th Republic Jubilee, Ghana is committed to endeavor to strengthen multilateralism for the benefit of all developing countries, including by presiding over global sustainability sustainable development and climate change negotiations and efforts to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the organization. Foreign Affairs Minister Dr. Karen Cummings said Ghana will discharge the important responsibilities of the chairmanship of the G77 and China Group with integrity and faithfulness to the principles and objectives of the Charter of the UN. Dr. Cummings also noted Ghana's resolve to use the opportunity to further the interests of all developing countries. The duties of the chairmanship will be discharged with the support of a range of bilateral partners and international organizations. Team members will be drawn from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, other government ministries and agencies from the Guyana diaspora. In the world of politics, Minister within the Ministry of Communities with Responsibility for Housing, Annette Ferguson, today rejected allegations made by opposition leader Barra Jagdio that she is corrupt and has acquired large plots of land, particularly three house lots on the east bank of the Marara. During an end-of-year press conference for her department today, Minister Ferguson said the opposition leader and the PPP General Secretary is a pathological liar, who she said does not have his facts right. Let me say to my fellow Guyanese, Annette Ferguson has one house lot allocation, and I repeat, one house lot, which as a citizen of Guyana, I have a right to. I applied for this house lot during the tenure of Mr. Jagdeo's PPP. And like many other Guyanese, I was only allocated after 2015. Ferguson explained that her plot of land is just 0.25 of an acre, which is equivalent to approximately 10,000 square feet, which is also equivalent to a normal house lot except for areas such as remigrant schemes. And I have just pointed you to my title which is 0.25 of an acre, which is equivalent to approximately 10,000 square feet, which also is equivalent to a, to a normal house lot, which is 10,000 square feet, except for areas such as remigrant scheme, where the square feet is more. Comparing my 10,000 square feet to what Jack Dio has is 216,000 square feet. And he, Jagdu, is calling me corrupt. This is a case, <laughs> this is a case where the wicked is cursing the righteous. And the Bible, the word of God says, reminds us of the devil accusing the brethren. You cannot blame the devil for accusing since that is his job. 
The minister said Mr. Jack Deere is disingenuous in his intentions, delusional in his judgment, deficient in morality, divisive in his politics, and disgraceful to the honorable institution of leadership. I say to you, the members of the media and his followers, or the followers of Jack Deere, that Jack Deere is a pathological liar. It is public knowledge that Mr. Jack Deere's PPP he paid what amounts to $114 per square foot for his house lot, while the ordinary citizens paid $317 for theirs. Remigrants were asked to pay $1,111 per square foot for their plot, and Mr. Jagdo has the gall to call me corrupt and talk about corrupt practice and three card game. The minister said she has engaged her attorney on the allegations made by the opposition leader and is now awaiting further advice from that attorney on the way forward. The opposition leader on the other hand has said publicly that the minister can go ahead and sue him if she wishes to take that step. Let's tell you now that the U.S. Embassy here in Georgetown today disassociated the U.S. government from a reported statement made by a U.S. official on the upcoming elections in Guyana. In a statement, the embassy said the comments reported by some of Guyana's online and print dailies were written by Professor Ellis last April, before his employment with the U.S. State Department, and in no way reflect an official position of the U.S. government. According to the U.S. Embassy statement, the outcome of the election is for the people of Guyana to decide, and in that regard, the only interest of the U.S. is in free, fair, and peaceful elections on the 2nd of March. The U.S. Embassy in Guyana said it regrets any misunderstanding caused by Professor Ellis's dated comments. One online news outlet came on the fire from the APNU AFC after reporting on the comments by Professor Ellis that the PPP is likely to win the next elections. The coalition claims that the professor once worked for a U.S. firm that has been hired by the PPP to assist in its campaign tactics for the upcoming elections. On the police blotter, the woman who is accused of attacking and beating a school teacher at her son's primary school two weeks ago is back on the police radar for attacking another woman, even as the probe into the attack on the teacher is ongoing. 25-year-old University of Ghana second-year student Emily Iman came under attack from the woman Charmin Mendonca on Friday evening. The incident took place at the headquarters of the Ghana Defense Force as the university student waited in the office of Mendonca's husband, who is a major in the GDF and a classmate of the young woman who was waiting in that office. The traumatized UG student was at the Albertson Police Station today to follow up on a report that she filed against the woman who she said assaulted her. She scrambled me. And she um, and I held on to her hands, and she keeps saying that um, she heard I'm having an affair, and I kept telling her that I'm not having an affair, which further led to her booting me. And I continued to held on to her hands, and then she ended up biting me. She bit me, and I still wasn't loosening her hands because she was trying to get something to hit me. And then she shoved me to the ground, and she choked me. And then I scrambled back onto her hands and then I pushed her up and then I braced her to the wall and I said, listen to me, I am not having an affair with your husband. The university student said she attempted to calm the woman down and she eventually lost her hands, but that led to more assault. And I lost and I lose her hand because I thought like she understood at that point what I was saying. But then she further leaned to the table and took a champagne glass, broke it, and slit me across my left eye. And where was the husband? Where was her husband during this time? This is in the army base. This is happening. Yes, it is in the army base happening. He, um, at the time, he wasn't there because while we were studying, he um, received a call and he exited the room. And he then came back until this assault was finished. She said when the assault was taking place, her classmate, who is the woman's husband, was not in the office. The young university student was treated for the gash on her forehead, bite marks to her arms and other injuries. And then after two other soldiers came and they um, tried to stop the bleeding, but it was, it was cut so deeply that it could, the blood couldn't have been controlled by, by a clot. 
that a cloth that they had there and he then came and he told me let's go to the um to the base um health facility the health center that they have there and we went there and the guys there could not have he was asking them to throw antibiotics and they said that no they can't do that and then is when he told me let's go to um balancing and there is where I would I receive medical attention and I received um, five stitches. The scared young woman said she wants a full police investigation and wants to see charges laid against the woman over the assault that she said stemmed from a false accusation. Police investigators intend to question the woman even as they await advice from the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions on her attack on a school teacher two weeks ago. Let's tell you now that a 40-year-old man from the Essequibo Coast was today remanded to jail after he was charged for cocaine trafficking. The accused, Dwayne Gildari, appeared at the Anna Regina Magistrates Court and pleaded not guilty as the charge of possession of narcotics for the purpose of trafficking was read to him. The court appearance came just one day after his arrest. According to the police, during an attempt to intercept Gildari on Monday afternoon, the vehicle that he was driving sped away from the scene. A bag was observed being thrown from the windows of the vehicle, and an examination of that bag unearthed over five pounds of cocaine in two packets. Gildari, who was driving the car, was arrested moments later and charged. He has been remanded to jail after entering that not guilty plea. His next court appearance will be on the 7th of January. A 53-year-old resident of Mobilissa was today charged for trafficking narcotics after being nabbed with just over two pounds of marijuana. The accused Michael Melville appeared before the chief magistrate today and denied the allegation that on the 7th of December he was found with the marijuana in his possession. The court was told that a party of policemen went to the man's house to conduct a search after receiving a tip that he was involved in the trafficking of narcotics. While the marijuana was not found in the house, it was discovered allegedly in the yard hidden under a zinc sheet. The accused denied having any knowledge of the marijuana, but he was arrested. In court today, the magistrate granted him bail in the sum of $200,000 and transferred the case to the Linden Magistrate's Court. Across the region with Samuel Suknanden is coming up next. They've made a positive impact on the heavy-duty transportation industry in Guyana since they've arrived. Guyanese are amazed at their power, durability, efficiency, and superior handling capabilities. These are brand new trucks, manufactured in partnership with German, Italian, and French companies. They have a powerful reputation for operating under very adverse Guyanese conditions and come with full after-sales service and spare parts. They're the most sought-after trucks today, with over 500 units in Guyana, and they're available in over 100 countries, including South America and the Caribbean. Caribbean. Be smart by brand new ST Howard Trucks today. Call 608 4998 and arrange for an inspection at ST Truck and Incorporated, Block B, Public Road Covenant, East Bank, Demerara. There once was a man named Stan whose business needed a new plan. Christmas was coming, this much was true. He needed some help but didn't know what to do. Then, fast as a flash, three helpers did come from Republic Bank. They came with some. One had low interest rates, one reduced equity, one with approval, so quick and easy. Now Stan is the man and his business is booming. Christmas is good and he is winning. Reach more customers and boost your business with a Republic Small Business Loan today. Taking you across the region right now, I'm Samuel Suknanda. Let's start off with some news from the Caribbean. Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who is attending the 9th African, Caribbean and Pacific ACP Group of Nations Summit in Nairobi, Kenya, is calling for a total war on corruption. Holness said corruption remains a big impediment in the economic takeoff of ACP countries. The Prime Minister said that if governments understood their role as facilitators of business while curbing corruption, ACP nations could be leaders in the fourth industrial revolution. Holness also challenged ACP nations to encourage more people-to-people -people engagements so as to create linkages and an atmosphere of trust needed to spur trade and cross-border investments. Jamaica ranks 70th on the 2018 Corruption Perception Index compiled by Transparency International. Let's take a look now at what's happening in Latin America. 
A military plane with 38 people on board has disappeared en route to Antarctica, Chile's Air Force says. The C-130 Hercules transport aircraft took off from Punta Arenas. At 16.55 local time, and operators lost contact at 18 hours 13. Those missing include 17 crew and 21 passengers. They were traveling to provide logistical support to a military base on Antarctica's King George Island. A search and rescue mission is underway. And finally, international news. A report presented at COP25 says that plans are in place for a huge expansion of oil drilling in the upper Amazon. The analysis says that Ecuador and Peru are set to sanction oil extraction across an area of the forest the size of Italy. Indigenous leaders from both countries have traveled to Madrid to urge a moratorium on using the oil. They say using the 5 billion barrels under the forest would harm the region and the world. The area in question is known as the sacred headwaters of the upper Amazon and spans some 30 million hectares. It is home to around 500,000 indigenous peoples from 20 nationalities and is a hotspot of biodiversity. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. Have a good night.